Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Let's go ahead and get this meeting going. Uh, welcome everybody to the Advancing Equity and Rezoning Open House. Today, Wednesday, November 13th. My name is Elizabeth Suarez. I will be facilitating this meeting, uh, this overall webinar about this and about this important topic. And my right hand, Virginia Garcia Pivic, will be administering behind the scenes um, what's going on. So this is how we're gonna be doing it logistically. And then I will ask uh, the, the wonderful professionals from CPD staff to introduce each one of them because we have several experts that have joined us as well. So let me start with the logistics. The logistics, we will have two presenters. We will have uh, uh, basically focus on providing some technical information about what is rezoning, why did we do this, et cetera, and then share with all of you the importance of this work that was uh, taken by a task force, a voluntary task force that did a lot of work for a couple years and um, analyzing a lot of the data that, that was shared with them and met multiple times on a yearly basis. And there some ideas came out from that experience. And now there are all that hard work has paid off. And there is some suggestions on how we can move forward this effort that is so important to our beautiful city and county of Denver. All of this information will be presented uh, to everybody. So before we start that, I want to let you know that this is in a webinar form, which means we will be taking your questions. If you have any, if you look at the little box that says Q&A, place your questions in there. We will make sure to address your question and answer as best as we can your questions. So that is how we're going to do it interactive. So look at that Q&A box and I uh, use it for any questions you have. Before we start, I want to go ahead and call each uh, staff member out and allow them to give their name and their title. So everybody is uh, knowledgeable of who they are. So let me start with Andrew. Sure, my audio is on before I start. Well, hello, uh, I'm Andrew Webb. I'm uh, uh, principal city planner at uh, Denver Community Planning and Development, uh, and I'm uh, on the project team. Thank I'll pass you. it off to Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Brandon Shaver, senior city planner and project manager for Advancing Equity and Rezoning. Perfect. Gina, please. Hi there. I'm Jenna Morton. I'm a marketing and communication specialist for CPD. Welcome. Rob? Hi, uh, yeah. Rob Haig. I'm a uh, senior city planner with CPD and uh, also part of, part of the project team. And last but not least, Kyle. Good afternoon. I'm Kyle Dalton. I'm the regulatory planning manager in Denver's community planning and development. Perfect. Thank you all. And before we start, I want to make sure that everybody that is in attendance realizes that this uh, meeting is being recorded that way for uh, residents that did not have the opportunity to join us to this open house, they will have the capability of uh, watching it later on. So this meeting is being recorded. So with that, I will ask Brandon to kick us off this important conversation. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. With that, uh, let's get started. So here is our agenda for today. We'll start by providing a background on the Advancing Equity and Rezoning Project, including why we're doing it and what we've done to get to this point. Um, I'll then pass it over to Rob, who will give us an overview of what rezoning is, or more of a rezoning 101, if you will. Uh, then we'll move to key outcomes this project is proposing, welcome any of your questions, and end with next steps. So this project seeks to update the rezoning process for a number of reasons. First, we continue to hear from the community that they would like to better understand what rezoning is and how they can meaningfully participate in this process as it often results in physical changes to their neighborhoods. We also have a citywide adopted plan, Blueprint Denver, that was developed with extensive community input and includes a wide variety of recommendations for how our city should grow over the next 20 years. Some of those recommendations, which I'll detail in the next slide, 
relate to making changes to Denver's rezoning process, which largely has not been updated since the 1950s. As we all know, Denver has grown and changed significantly since then, and we have continued to witness and hear deep concerns from the community about how rezoning can impact neighborhoods in different ways. Uh, for those reasons, the city started the Advancing Equity and Rezoning Project in late 2021. This project, after almost three years of extensive engagement with the community and key stakeholders, will result in important updates to the Denver Zoning Code uh, through what we call a text amendment, which would change the rules for the rezoning process and also include changes to our internal processes and customer materials that explain rezoning to the public and will provide a greater opportunity for them to participate. As I mentioned, the idea behind this project comes from recommendations from a plan that the city adopted in 2019. Uh, Blueprint Denver is a long range plan adopted by city council that provides many recommendations about the future use of land in our city. On this slide, you can see the three key recommendations that speak to how the city should update the rezoning process to better address important topics related to increasing equity throughout our city, such as expanding housing choice, increasing affordability, and making sure folks don't get displaced as the city grows. Other recommendations call for updating the rezoning process so it is more predictable and can guarantee components of equitable development and making sure the city improves how the public becomes aware of and participates in the rezoning process. Um, Brandon, as you are going forward in the presentation, there is a question about if how can they get a copy of this presentation that was put together? Oh, great question. We will definitely be posting the copy of this presentation as well as the recording um, on this project website. And I'm sure a team member will post a link to that in the chat for folks to view. Okay, thank you. Sure. So um, in addition to listening to the community throughout the course of this project, the city also created a diverse task force with 22 members and they brought a wide range of perspectives to the table. Some of the task force members were from the Denver Planning Board and City Council who evaluate rezoning requests on a reg regular basis. Other members of our task force were rezoning applicants who have successfully and unsuccessfully navigated the rezoning process. Another key group of our task force was made up of residents and business owners who have witnessed rezonings happen around them, but didn't have, understand or have the tools to interact with the process. This group met 15 times over the course of the project. They brought their various equity lenses and perspectives to each meeting and are in support of the changes that we'll be presenting to you in a few slides. Here is a graphic to illustrate the phases and the timelines of the Advancing Equity and Rezoning Project. After creating our task force, the project officially kicked off in 2022. Uh, the task force began meeting monthly to analyze and identify issues with the current rezoning process. And during this phase, we held our first community meeting to confirm the issues with the public before the project team then started thinking through alternatives, alternatives for the task force to evaluate. Using input from the community and in coordination with our task force, the project team began identifying a preferred approach and drafting updates to the rezoning process before releasing a public review draft of the proposed changes last Monday, November 4th. And where we are today is at the beginning of that review and adoption phase. And we're really excited to share these suggested improvements to Denver's rezoning process and welcome any feedback and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, the changes recommended by this project would then go through an adoption phase, which ends at city council voting to approve. After approval, the project team will then update our processes and our materials to implement the new rules. Uh, now I'll pass it to Rob to give everyone a clear understanding of what rezoning actually is. Thanks, Brandon. Um, so as, as Brandon uh, introduced the, the next step of this, we want to take a few minutes to make sure that everyone's on the same page and understands what we're talking about uh, and what like these foundations are, which are zoning and rezoning. So when we talk about zoning, we're talking about a set of laws, rules, and regulations that govern how properties in the city can be used. The city is divided into different geographic regions known as zone districts, and each zone district has different rules for how property can be used or developed. 
The map on the right shows an aerial image of um, part of Northwest Denver, uh, where the different colors identify the different zone districts. And the rules in these different zone districts include the uses that might be allowed on a property, for example, where you could have a restaurant, a store, or, or live in a house, um, or what can be built on the property. And these include regulations about the allowed maximum heights, required setbacks, and other numerous design standards. Uh, so, for example, here, the yellow and straw colors are residential zone districts, uh, and the red areas are mixed-use zone districts. Um, and some of the purple areas up in the top right are some of the city's industrial zone districts. So when you're looking at zone districts in the city, they look like these two examples down in the bottom left, usually um, uh, with kind of three different sections. First is what's called the uh, neighborhood context. Then the zone district uh, is kind of in the next two pieces. So this first one, USUB, is actually urban single unit. And then the B identifies the minimum lot size. Next one is CMX5, which would be urban center, mixed use, or sorry, yeah, mixed use, and five stories would be the maximum height allowed. Mm. So this leads up to the next topic of rezoning. <clears throat> rezoning is the process required to, taint, to change zone district on any given property or properties in the city. Rezonings can either be initiated by a property or group of property owners or by the city. Rezonings are a really important tool in implementing our adopted plans, some of which Brandon talked about earlier, and they really help the city evolve in ways that reflects the future vision of a community as articulated in those plans. Rezoning applications are first processed by staff, which provides we provide a recommendation to planning board, and the planning board uh, holds a public hearing, and then they issue their recommendation uh, to city council, who makes the final decision on rezoning applications. If a rezoning is found to comply with the rezoning criteria, then it can be approved by city council. So rezoning can occur for a variety of reasons. Applicants may request to rezone their property into a different zone district in order to change the allowed building height or reduce the minimum lot size or to change uh, the uses that are allowed on their subject property, such as going from a zone district that allows only residential uses to one that allows a mix of uses that include commercial or office uses. The city may also initiate rezonings for these same reasons as a part of the implementation of our adopted plans. And with that, I think we'll take a quick pause to see if there are any questions um, about this technical information before we move on. And I hand it back to Brandon. Great. Seeing no questions, maybe we'll give a couple minutes for people to um, type them in. Th there are um, one of the participants is saying, are there parallel efforts on the way to liberalize zoning, remove zoning restrictions of a certain building type to encourage abundant housing, housing options, address displacement at the root, allow for mixed uses more widely across the city? I'd say that's a great question. And this project is all of just one piece of that puzzle. And so this project is really aiming at how through rezonings, which are only 10% of the development in our city can contribute to that kind of equitable development. And so in a couple of slides away from now, I'll be going through what this project can offer related to those issues. Okay, great, perfect. Any others, let's give another minute because that uh, the information shared by Rob is quite technical. So, so we wanna make sure that people have had time to think over the great information shared. Okay. So um, um, there's another comment, say, agree zoning should eliminate SFH zoning. That has the potential to double and triple available housing. It's a comment to no question. So with that, Brandon, take it away. 
You're good. All right. So now that we're on the same page around what rezoning is, I'm going to present on the key changes and outcomes that this project is proposing. So two key outcomes for this project are creating accessible and clear opportunities for the public to get involved um, in the rezoning process and updating the rezoning review criteria to remove unnecessary language and make them easier to understand. So now let's take a look at, at these one at a time and we'll get into more detail on the issues we've heard and what we're proposing doing to remedy them. So the current rezoning process does not provide for accessible and clear opportunity for the public to engage. Today, rezoning app notifications use very, very technical language or planning jargon. They don't provide details that are most important to the public and they're only provided to property owners not the residents and business tenants, which account for almost half of the occupied spaces in our city. To solve for these issues, this project will result in changes that will include renters and business tenants in our rezoning notices, post signs on the subject properties earlier in the process, and ensure these notices are written in plain language, making them easier to understand what rezoning is being proposed. We've also heard that the rezoning process is challenging for applicants and community members to navigate and participate in, and that it lacks clear standards or expectations for public engagement. Proposed improvements to address these issues include the city updating the rezoning website, creating easy to use guides for community and applicants to understand and meaningfully participate in the process, requiring applicants to do community outreach, and providing them with the best practices engagement guide so they can do so effectively. Now let's explore the details around the second key outcome of this project, which is revising the rezoning review criteria. We've heard from the community task force and decision makers that the current rezoning review criteria are hard to understand and do not clearly consider equity impacts. So in an effort to make them easier to understand, the project team proposes to update them by removing criteria that are unnecessary or redundant, clarifying where possible, and really focusing on our city adopted plans, which are developed with extensive community outreach and engagement. To address equity impacts, this project will result in the publishing of guides for planning board and city council, that more clearly explain Denver's equity and climate policies and how they can be used to review rezoning applications. We're also wanting to expand staff reports and presentations with a greater focus on equity and climate and provide templates for rezoning applicants to voluntarily commit to equitable outcomes at the time of rezoning. Examples of these commitments could be cool roofs to mitigate heat island effects, improve transit access where it lacks, and increase the affordability of housing units above current city requirements. So for an example, um, if the rezoning is proposed in an area that doesn't have great access to RTD stations and the community expresses that need for more connectivity, at the time of rezoning, an applicant could choose to commit to providing bus shuttle service, eco passes, or other kinds of transportation improvements uh, benefiting both the existing and the future residents in the neighborhood. This commitment would be in agreement with the city and would be enforced at the time of the building's completion and would be monitored into the future. So back to the rezoning review criteria, here you can see the difference between current and what is proposed with the focus on removing what is unnecessary, which is uniformity of district regulations and restrictions and justifying circumstances. We also propose clarifying public health safety and general welfare, which has an exclusionary and racist past and changing it to public interest, which generally means the same thing, but it's easier for folks to understand and moves away from problematic language. And lastly, focusing on consistency with adopted plans is the most important criterion 
and providing an exception for an extraordinary need, such as additional afford affordable housing units to address Denver's housing shortage. Uh, now that we've gone through the key outcomes of the Advancing Equity and Rezoning Project, um, we'd like to uh, first talk about other ways in which the city is addressing equity and then get your thoughts and feedback. Um, there is, uh, somebody said a comment, not a question. I think they're typing it up. So let's pause sure. uh, for a few minutes to see if there is a comment. Uh, in the meantime, somebody else brought in a question. Who decides what is an extraordinary community need? In quotations, extraordinary community need. That is a really great question. I think that it could be, you know, a number of factors. Um, an example of that recently that we've seen in the city is that we have had, um, I think it was a couple of years ago when the new mayor came in, um, that there was an extraordinary community need for uh, something to do with folks that were experiencing um, that were unhoused. And so a way in which the city did that was by rezoning hotel properties to allow them to become shelters for folks that were unhoused. And that was by, I think, you know, an executive order. I think that there were a number of news articles and, and other um, departments that were expressing the need to house folks in a, in a really immediate manner. And so that's one example of an extraordinary community need that Denver has witnessed in the recent in the recent past. Okay, okay. And um, the person that wants to say a comment, they're still formulating it. So I think they will catch up uh, with the other section. But there is another comment that came in and said a neighborhood consistency based on current form or envisioned form. That is a great question. When we are um, as staff reviews rezoning applications and as they are moved forward to planning board and city council for their evaluation and decision, when they are looking at that criterion of consistency with neighborhood context, um, some district purpose and intent, they are looking at Blueprint Denver, which provides future neighborhood context. So we are looking into the future when we evaluate rezonings and that's what they are evaluated against. Okay. There's a couple more questions, Brandon. The other one is, do any of the proposed revised zoning rules include requirements for mandatory community benefit agreements? Also a great question. And um, community benefit agreements are um, one tool to ensure equitable development. However, those are negotiated between um, an applicant and a private party. And this project, um, the commitments that we have developed are between the city and the applicant. So this project does not mandate community benefits agreements, but we do recognize that those are still an important tool in some circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the next question is, how is the process going to advance racial equity to reduce involuntary displacement of residents in BIPOC communities? Yes, that is so a great question as well. Um, and I, I'm going to get into this and maybe um, answer some of these questions in the next slide that I have, which talks about other ongoing and future efforts that the city is adding to our equity toolbox. This project, again, is really focused on um, rezoning, which is 10% of the development in our city. And one of our equity metrics that is found in Blueprint Denver is focused around preventing um, involuntary displacement. And that is one of the things that we take into consideration when we're evaluating rezonings in vulnerable areas in the city. Great, so there is one more comment. We'll take this comment and then we'll move on, Brandon. And the comment is a key factor ought to be legal support for CBA. Now residents are outgunned by the developers. It's a comment. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your involvement, for your questions, for your comments. Let's go ahead and give it back to Brandon so he can talk about what were the outcomes and the next steps uh, with the suggestions. Thank you. So again, and I, I think this is clear by those questions that just came in that were really great. Um, the Advancing Equity and Rezoning Project is just one way that the city is working to improve equity and achieve equitable outcomes across our city. Uh, there are a number of ongoing and future efforts that we are uh, gonna be undertaking that will be added to our toolbox. Um, so a couple of those. Uh, first, the city is committed to continuing to do proactive rezonings after we adopt new plans. 
Uh, this practice allows us to harness the extensive outreach and engagement that we conduct during the planning process, and it more quickly implements the community's vision for the future of their neighborhood. Um, so I also want to note the second bullet here is that Denver currently has two zoning codes, um, one that was largely created in the 1950s, and we also have a current one that was adopted in 2010. And it's really important for the city that we continue to rezone properties out of the old code into the new one so that all of Denver can develop in a more equitable and climate conscious manner. Um, another effort that we have moving forward is the city allowing accessory dwelling units or ADUs in all residential areas. Uh, this works to implement a key recommendation in Blueprint Denver to expand housing choice and provide some affordability. And it also relieves property owners from the burden and cost of having to individually rezone their properties. I would just finish this with saying that after the advancing equity and rezoning project is adopted, that will allow staff to begin other projects like these uh, to improve equitable outcomes citywide. Okay. So um, with that, I'll hand it over to Elizabeth to continue uh, reading out any questions or comments that you all have. So um, thank you. Thank you for uh, all this information, Brendan, as well as Rob. Uh, let's give a couple more minutes. This is a lot of information to digest. Um, this is all the information that we wanted to share uh, with all of you that are present in this webinar. There is um, one a comment here that basically, um, let me go ahead and read it. There should be some consideration protocol for those neighborhoods that do not have a neighborhood plan in place to guide more fine-grained decisions. Right now, my neighborhood, which is Berkeley, lacks a neighborhood plan, so all applicants have to go on is Blueprint Denver, which doesn't speak to the specific characteristics context or vision that is typically detailed in a neighborhood plan. Thanks for allowing me to provide this comment. You're welcome. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything to this comment from um, the city planning department. I think that's a great comment. And I think um, the city and CPD have been um, very much committed to our neighborhood planning initiative, which I'm sure a team member will drop a link to that in the chat. And the plan is for within a 20 year span um, for Denver to be covered with neighborhood plans so we can get that more granular guidance. Mm -hmm. And I think it's echoed with others because there is another comment that says agreed with need for more neighborhood plans. So that is something that it is important, very important in order to help as we continue, uh, this city continues to grow. Let's see if a couple more minutes. Uh, we have done this in the speed of light. <laughs> so uh, for all of you attending, uh, there, this is the uh, information that was gonna be shared. So we have more time here. Um, to, if you wanna ask any questions, if not, uh, we will then go into what is next and wrap it up. So let me give a couple more minutes if that's okay. And once again, I wanna I thank everybody that is here uh, that took uh, time away from their busy schedule, especially at this time to join in order to have this co conversation. And then there is now a question saying, how do we engage with this process? Brian, then if you can go ahead and um, talk about uh, it. Yep, and these are great questions. And I always have the slide right after that I think provides that level of detail, but um, to succinctly answer that, this uh, project is out for public review. And so this is exactly that time that we wanted to come out to community, make you aware of these proposed changes and um, would take in any of your feedback. And we have all the way up until um, we're planning to get to city council early next year in February. So we're happy to take in any of your comments. Um, there's a comment form that is on our project webpage and you'll also find our strategy report there. So uh, would love for everybody to take a look at those and get back to me if you have any further comments or concerns or questions. So let's go ahead and uh, Brandon, and I'll still allow more uh, questions. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, those dates. I know that there's several dates that are important. So let's share those and that may trigger a couple other questions to be asked. Go ahead. 
Certainly. So our public review draft is um, live on our website as of last Monday, November 4th. Um, we Can will you be remind going... everybody of your website? Just make sure. Yes. I, I believe it's denver.gov slash um, advancing equity and rezoning. Okay. Um, so we're in our public review draft phase right now and expecting to go in front of planning board um, for a public hearing and their recommendation to city council that is scheduled to happen on Wednesday, December 4th. And then we will take it through um, the public adoption phase with city council, um, hoping to get to a public hearing with them on Monday, February 3rd. And if this project is adopted by them, the proposed changes that I went through in this presentation would start to apply after Monday, February 24th. Okay. So let's pause again here before um, we conclude everything If to see if there are any other comments, any questions. This is your opportunity to, you have the uh, subject matter experts from the city planning development um, group. So department, so do you have a more detailed report on what will be reviewed by planning board city council? Excellent question. Yes. And so let's see if I can maybe go back a slide or so, or maybe, I, you know, I probably don't have that in here, but exactly what's going to be in front of planning board and city council for their review is um, the proposed changes that will go into the Denver zoning code. And so here, if you look on the screen, you can see um, that we have a review draft, a public review draft of what that text language looks like in the zoning code. And so that's also posted on our website. And that is essentially like what um, Planning Board and City Council will be reviewing and approving with this project. And then there are a number of other updates that I talked through that are more standard operating procedures for CPD. Um, but the real regulation change is gonna be those changes to the Denver Zoning Code, which are in that public review draft of the text amendment. And they are in this, in this slide, they are identified in a blue as well as a pinkish tone or what are those? I see some. Yes, so there's a couple of different colors going on here. If you look at the public review draft of the text amendment that's on our webpage, you'll see that any new text is in a red underline and any text that we're getting rid of will have a red strike through. Okay. Okay. And so this is just, yeah, the, there's there's clear instructions and conventions on the uh, first page to uh, allow folks to figure out how to read through that. And then there's another question that asks if they could have the email of the person's presenting, which means uh, you, Brandon, as well as Rob. Certainly. We'll make sure to put those in the chat. To put them in the, in the, yeah, in the Q&A. Okay. It will be in the Q&A box <laughs> where the answer will be provided. Let's see if there's any other questions, anything else that people may want to comment or basically ask. We once again appreciate everybody that has stayed on. Uh, this is a very important topic. This is a topic that affects all of us, so we appreciate your um, input. There's another, um, okay, uh, there sounds great, much appreciate the work. So um, just wanted to make sure that everybody um, was aware of that comment. So with that, um, oh, there's a question coming up. Uh, are you doing community outreach and community events or other places where people gather, live? Uh, so for this project, it's, it's, you know, really technical and it's a change to the zoning code. So for this project, we held that first community meeting once we kicked off the project and started to hear the issues from our task force and from the community. And then this is our um, intended outreach before we move into the adoption phase for this project. Okay. But please share with all of your, please share all of our documents on our webpage uh, with any of your community members. We'd love to get their feedback as well. 
Also, um, Brandon, I'm just going to add here. Hi, this is Jenna Morton, Marketing Communication Specialist with the city. Um, we also send all of this information out to city council offices and registered neighborhood organizations. So hopefully they also disseminate that amongst their co uh, constituents or members um, and promote it on social media. So trying to connect with folks in a variety of different ways to make sure that they're aware of um, what we're working on. Thank you, Annette. Thank you. Any parting words from Rob or Kyle or Andrew or even Jenna before Brandon gives his parting words? Oh, there's one more question. I said those efforts do not usually reach historically excluded community members. Um, that's a comment that I think uh, we need to take seriously. Uh, and then can you provide a few specific examples of changes to the public notification and public engagement requirements that improve outreach to those that are hard to reach? Certainly. A big improvement that I went through is um, if this project is approved, the city will then be sending notifications of rezoning to the tenants and renters of buildings, whereas today it's only going out to property owners. And so we know how many apartment buildings there are. We know how many homes are rented out. We know how many office spaces are rented out. With the approval of this project, we will begin notifying the tenants and renters of structures of rezonings. And we will also be posting signs um, much earlier in the process. So they are aware that a rezoning is proposed around them. And then we are also changing our application so that when folks do come in and want to apply for a rezoning, we have a requirement that they tell us what kind of community outreach they've done and prior to submitting their application and we'll give them a best practices a guide for how to do that engagement that's targeted to the area that they're proposing to rezone in. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. And um, the development chair for one of the RNOs, the CCEA um, requested to have his email added to the distribution list. And uh, thank you, um, Jenna, for doing that. And basically, when is the best, when is the best practices guide going to be available? Mm -hmm. I would expect that that would be available before um, this project becomes effective on um, February 24th, if it's adopted by city council on February 3rd. I'm sure that would be available on our website prior to that effective date. So you're waiting until passing February 3rd when you go to city council for approval before you make it available? Is Publicly, that... perhaps, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see if up to now, I don't think there's any more questions. So with that, I will hand it back over to Brandon to see if uh, any parting words. And then, oh, one more question. Would you be providing an opportunity to comment on the best practices guide? I can follow up on that one. Um, I would love to, if um, you can provide comments to our public review draft or add that to a comment form response, and we can follow up with you on that. Okay. And, um, okay, perfect. Okay, they're saying thank you, and also the Jenna. Uh, thank you to Jenna because she signed up uh, this um, the the development chair for his neighborhood. Um, so let's go ahead, and with all further, with no further ado, let's go ahead and uh, Brandon, if you can kick us off and uh, and wrap this all up. Great. I really appreciate everyone attending today. Um, as a reminder, the presentation and a recording of this open house will be available within a few days on our project webpage. Um, please also review the public review draft of the text amendment and our strategy report. Any comments or feedback you have there are really invaluable for us. And um, we really just appreciate you all for staying tuned to this project as it's been going on for almost three years. And we have some really great ideas that have come from you all. Uh, there is a question. Can you let us know how many people are on the call other than CPD um, uh, staff? I would say to you that it fluctuated between 9 and 12 in addition to the staff. Okay. 
Anything else? Any other than that? Okay. Well, Rob and um, and Brandon, you were extremely efficient. So, and thank you to everybody that attended. We greatly appreciate your input, your questions, your comments. Uh, this will make a better final product, all your input, and we appreciate that. And uh, let's all stay in touch and move this project further. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.